There with the goals, the U.S. wins 3-0. Mikey Veras team now 2-0 on the tournament. They have clinched a spot in the knockout rounds. They'll play Slovakia next on Friday. For more on the big victory over Fiji, then time to welcome into Football America as a guy whose career we've actually followed for quite some time on this show. Diego Luna, of course, of Real Salt Lake. Before that, El Paso Locomotive in the USL. Diego, great to have you here on Football Americas. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. So, I mean, tell me a little bit about the game today because you look on paper, you say Fiji. I think you guys had something like 31 shots total here. You figure it's just going to be a total domination. Instead, you don't get that second goal till the 88th minute. What happened in this game? Why was it so tough? And what changed either at halftime or in the second half for you guys to break it open? I think it was a mentally tough game. I think the guys came into the game and and it was a, a mentally tough game where we struggled on on breaking that final line where they where they dropped in and created a a back line of six, you know, and that that's difficult to break. And I think it, it just took some time and took us being better in the final third. And uh, it was lucky enough uh, I was the one to to break through and find that find that opening goal in the 66 minute. And the combinations and stuff is exactly what we needed to to break a line that that dropped back like that. Diego, it always takes that first goal to go in for the floodgates to open, for the team to relax, for Fiji to come out and play it a little bit more. It was you that scored. I thought you could have scored against Ecuador in the very first game. You've been one of the standout players for the U.S. in these two games. Walk me through the goal, because it looked like Kate Cal was asking for a penalty kick. It looked like the Fiji players thought there might have been a penalty kick called. Everybody stopped. You were the only one that kind of realized play was still going on. Yeah, no, it was, it was a pass. I played into the middle, and I was coming around for the layoff. And um, yeah, Cade got clipped and everybody kind of stopped. And uh, I just followed through and, and saw the opening and just took that shot and tucked it into the bottom right. And yeah, lucky enough, they, they, they let it play on and I got that goal. Diego, you're of course joining us live from Argentina. Everybody saw the images after Argentina won the Senior World Cup, just crazy scenes. I wonder if you're feeling any of that vibe here at the Under 20 World Cup. Is the atmosphere intense there? No, it definitely is. I think I think we underestimated the amount of people that we'd that we'd have at games, and uh, you know that the just the the vibe around and the people that that are showing up and and celebrating and and vibing for us. So it's definitely you can feel it in the atmosphere that it's that it's big here. Diego, you guys are now on to the knockout rounds. That's the fourth time in four tournaments. No other country in this tournament can can say that. Slovakia up next. Uh, I have to imagine you guys are feeling confident. How confident are you? And what I mean by that is, can the U.S. team go on and win it all? I think it's a thing. It's a big question you ask. And I think it's a thing where, where we take it by day by day. And I think right now we're happy about this this win and happy about you know qualifying for round 16. But I think tomorrow everybody's back at zero and, and we, we recover and we're, we go into every game as the underdog. So I think we're taking it day by day. And I think um, that, that's what we need to do. And that's what we're going to keep doing and, and prove to the world you know what, what, what we can do every single game. Diego, we first saw this team kind of at the under-20 qualifiers, but not all your teammates from that tournament are here at the World Cup. A few of them had to stay home because of club decisions. I wonder for you in your discussions with RSL, kind of what went into those conversations then your decision to be here at the under-20 World Cup as opposed to staying back home with your club team? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's it's unfortunate for the guys that weren't allowed to come and, and of course, fortunate for the guys that were. And I think it's more of a communication between club and player and, you know, what the player's feeling and stuff. So I think it was it was the right decision for me. And I think it's everyone's happy and I'm here to to perform. And, and I think we need to focus on the guys that are that got released and that are here to that are here to perform and, and get this team as far as we can. Diego, before I ask you about the locomotive from El Paso, because then you, you spent some time there, and we've spoken a lot about that club in general and your time there. Let me ask you something. You've played like 89 minutes in, in MLS play with Ralph Salt Lake. You've been one of the standout players for the U.S. Youth National Team. You definitely can see your confidence. Are you hoping these performances can translate to more minutes now with RSL? Because there are a lot of people who ask themselves why you don't play more there. Yeah, it's a tricky question, and I think I think it's something where – where it's just, I think I'm just going to keep my head down and keep working. You know, there's not really much to say there, but let my performance do the talking and, and hopefully be put in a in a place where where I could succeed. And I think that's something that, 
that I'm really focused to. And I just got to focus on, on every time I get the chance to perform in front of people and, and just keep my head down and keep working. Hopefully, you know, I'll get more playing time um, going back to RSL. All right, let's talk about the locomotive, El Paso locomotive. We've spoken a lot about this team here on this program. You spent some time there. Uh, tell me about your time in El Paso. What did it mean to you? Yeah, no, El Paso, you know, going back there is, is probably my, you know, it was a, it was a dream start, I think, to a, to a professional career. I, I went there to a, to a place that was just loving, that loved the sport, loved the team and, and the staff, everyone there, the players all gave me the confidence, supported me on and off the field. And I think it was it was the best thing in my career so far that has that has led me into all these things. I don't think without El Paso and without everybody that's helped me there, I, I would be where I'm at today. So, you know, everything there, the community, the staff, everyone that, that has helped me or that I've I've been in touch with there was was has helped me some way or form, you know, and in, in to get me where I'm at. So it was just a, a dream start. You know, you're not just a product of El Paso. You're a product of Northern California as well. And I think one of the goals today may be Cade Cows. Like, you were involved. Cade's involved, obviously. There's a lot of Northern California influence uh, on this under-20 team, Diego. What's going on in Northern California in terms of development? I don't know. It's the, it's the Bay Area blood, I think. I think <laughs> us, you know, back there in the Bay, you know, we just got the – we got all the right things there. And a lot of – I think it's a lot of uh, – there's a word, just uh, – the the blood in us, I think, it's just the way we we're raised and all the soccer out there and the and the vibe out there in the Bay Area, you know, the grind and and you know, like I said, it's I've taken a couple, you know, trips away from home to get to where I'm at today, but it's it's all from being in the Bay Area, you know, raised there and and developed there, and it's like Kate. Kate is a good friend of mine that I knew way back, and I think it, it's just good to you know play with them on the same field again and and be here with with you know old friends. All right. All right. I got one for you, Diego. I got plenty of uh, Bay Area influence in me. There are hella mullets on your team. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even get me started. Um, yeah, no. I know we need to talk to some of these guys, but um, I think uh, we'll, we'll get that sorted, you know, definitely before before the round of 16. Okay. <laughs> There it is, the important stuff here on Football Americas. The team is playing well, but they need to look good uh, as well. We know Diego Luna, he's always looking sharp. That, uh, that's definitely part of the plan. Diego, great to have you with us here on Football Americas. Thanks for the time and continued success down there at the Under-20 World Cup in Argentina. Best of luck, my man. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.